I'd known Jerome Bixby's work primarily from uh, the story It's a Good Life. I didn't realize he had a uh, Star Trek connection until I took the job. Like a lot of people, I, I grew up just being a really big Star Trek fan. Um, I would say that my most personal connection to Star Trek is that I was at the first Star Trek convention in New York City, which uh, makes me whatever you want to call me. But uh, in fact, I had the little badge, you know, the, 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 the thing that they gave out at the registration badge. And um, my wife, uh, the woman who became my wife is a really big Star Trek fan as well, so on, on one of our very first dates I actually gave her my registration badge from the first ever Star Trek convention and it made an impression on her. I've been blessed to be on all three incarnations of the modern versions of Star Trek. The first one was before my time, um, playing everything from Worf's brother, Commander Kern, who was a favorite among the fans, to my favorite episode, The Visitor, which won People's Award and Critics Award as the best Star Trek episode ever. Flattered by that. They put me in, a, in, a, in a, a show called Inner Light, in which I played Batai, who was Captain Picard's best friend on this imaginary planet. And they ended up using me again on Voyager for a uh, holodeck in which I played an Irish town, and then a couple episodes of um, uh, the latest Star Trek in which uh, I played John Billingsley's mentor in a, um, a hospital uh, satellite. I have a Star Trek connection uh, because I played Dr. Phlox on the installment that killed the franchise, Enterprise. I think most people would agree that the best episode John Bixby wrote was Mirror Mirror, and in fact every iteration of Star Trek that's followed Next Gen and, and Deep Space, all of them have all done Mirror Universe episodes. Well, all of those episodes, that whole mythology, all comes from Mirror Mirror, which John Bixby wrote. So he's incredibly important to the Star Trek mythology. My mother, uh, who passed away about t uh, 10 years ago now, uh, was a huge, huge Star Trek fan. One of her favorite episodes was Mirror Mirror, which coincidentally was written by Jerome Bixby. And when I had read the script and then I uh, learned about the connection to Star Trek and you know, to one of her favorite episodes, I was really drawn to that for that reason. Well, I was a real Twilight Zone fan. I remember one Memorial Day I was down at my brother's house visiting and they had a Twilight Zone um, uh, marathon on and I thought, well, I'll watch a couple. And I, wa I wound up spending the entire holiday in front of the TV because I just love Twilight Zone. And when I found out that this was the same writer who wrote the episode about the boy who sent people off into the cornfield, I was, I was in rapture. So. <laughs> Dad found out It's a Good Life was going to be the basis of one of Rod Serling's Twilight Zones. Dad's like, cool, sure, I'm going to write it. And so Dad starts making notes to do the script. And then he finds out Rod Serling wrote it already. He, he did the script before he even had the rights. And Serling gives the script to my dad and says, if you don't like it, then you know you can do it. And Dad's like, good, I hope it sucks. He reads it, like, damn, because the script was great. Growing up watching Star Trek with my dad or watching The Twilight Zone, um, I love it because I loved them because you'd see a story and as far-fetched or crazy as it seemed they always brought it back to reality to where you think wow this really could happen when science fiction is is interesting it offers possibility and it offers a perspective or an experience outside the box